Good morning, everybody. Please make sure um, as you come in, please sign in in um, the chat box. So put your name and the center uh, that you work at. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. So we're going to get ready to get started with the, our second cohort about um, anecdotal note taking. So we're going to start with the brief introduction. Okay, go up, Sasha. Mm -hmm. So I'll start first. My name is Paris Hayes, and I'm a child development specialist with Matrix Head Start CCP Division. I'm the um, CDS for LLC. LACC and Little Brilliant Minds. Good morning, everybody. My name is Sasha Edmondson. I'm also a child developmental specialist, and I am uh, work with all the home sites. Um, that's uh, seven sites: um, House of Joy, uh, Miss Tiffany Wa Tiffany Dye, uh, Miss Johnny Bennett, uh, Miss Cindy Willis, Miss Carly. Miss Donna at Says, Miss Phyllis at Fun Time Learning. Okay, if some people may have just joined, we ask that you type your name and your center inside of the chat box. So that way we'll know who was in attendance today and also so you can receive your certificates. So we're going to be focusing on writing and scoring anecdotal notes. Major Schumann Service, the mission. Inspired by its heritage since 1906, Major Schumann Services advocates for and serves the most vulnerable in the metropolitan Detroit community and empowers individuals and families to enhance the quality of their lives and achieve self-sufficiency. Matrix Human Service Mission. Mission. Matrix is, proven, is a proven leader of uniting all human service efforts to move individuals and families towards self-sufficiency in our time with your help. Interdicting poverty of the mind, body, and spirit. So our objective for today's training, we're gonna review why anecdotal notes are important we're going to um, talk about how to write a complete anecdotal note, when to take anecdotal notes, and what core category and categories does that note go under and how to score them, and then we'll have a summary. Okay, also I forget to mention, if anyone 
wants to speak, please raise your hand so your mics can be unmuted. We're going to hold all questions to the end, but we're going to ask for participation. So if you want to be a participant, um, please raise, um, go and raise your hand and then they'll the, um, unmute your microphone. So now we're going to talk about the importance of anecdotal notes. As educators, we want to be able to assess young children's development so we can feel confident that our best practices are being contributing to children's growth. In order to assess our children successfully, teachers must first learn how to take proper anecdotal notes. In this webinar, teachers will learn the proper way to write and score anecdotal notes. By correctly writing and scoring anecdotal notes, this will help teachers understand how children are progressing. When teachers score observations through core advantage, teachers have guidance about what skills children should develop next. So at this time, we would like a few people to share the, their name, the age group that they work with, what problems they have when writing anecdotal notes, and what core items do they have the most trouble getting notes for. Any volunteers that want to introduce themselves this morning? Okay, so I have some hand raised. I'm going to allow Raquel Smith. Raquel? Yes. Okay. Hello, good morning. Hello, good, good morning, Ms. Raquel. Good morning. My name is Raquel Smith. I work at Frank and the Right Cellar. Um, I don't have, I work with infants in the infant room. Um, I don't have any trouble writing notes on my children. What about the core items? You have any trouble getting notes for certain core items? No, no. I, I don't know what category they go under. Mm -hmm. No. Thank you for sharing, Ms. Smith. Anyone Thanks. else? Okay, thank you, Ms. Smith. Okay, so now I'm gonna um, unmute Janicia Sr. Good morning, Janicia. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Okay. Um, so my name is my name is Janicia Sr. Um, I also oh, work senior. with infants. Um, I don't have any trouble with writing the notes. Sometimes I find um, the technology is a little more difficult to get, but um, I just have to make sure I really plan for it. Okay, thank you for sharing. Thank you. Let's um, do two more. Okay, let me find uh, a couple of people. I think we have a few here. Raise their hand. I see two. Okay, this is, I, okay, forgive me if I'm butchering this. Is this Dalau? I'm gonna mute your microphone. Hello, good morning. Okay, I don't think she wants to speak. Okay, I'm not seeing any more. We actually okay. have some people that's commenting in the chat box okay. in response to the question. Okay. Okay, here's from Rueda Rafiq. I work with preschool students, so I don't really have trouble getting in notes. And then I see Nakisha Lawler. I work with Tyler's at Growing Minds Learning Center. I typically don't have trouble taking notes. Oh, that's pretty good then. Okay, okay so we're gonna move on to yeah. the next slide. Thank you, ladies.
So the policy for writing anecdotal notes, 1304.21C2, teachers must use a variety of strategies to promote and support children's learning and development progress based on the observations and ongoing assessment for each child. So uh, a question, you guys can put your answers in the chat box. Can you go back to slide, Sasha? So for most of our responses that we have, um, no one really has any um, downfalls when it comes to note taking, but what type of strategies do you use to, um, to um, encounter your notes as far as like the one young lady said, she kind of she kind of plans for the technology. So, what do you do to um, put you in a position to get the notes that you need? Okay, I have the hand raised. This is Phyllis McCaskill. Good morning. Okay, let's try another one. This is Janicia Senior. Okay, so um, how I plan out my notes is I'll go to the notes that I that I want to work with for that week. I mean, well, the the I the core items, and I'll read through the levels. I guess that's how I would say it. I read through the levels so I can fully make sure I fully understand what I am looking for and then go back and build my lesson on those levels, if that makes sense. Because I kind of know my kids, so I kind of know where they should fall. So I make sure that I'm fully prepared to grasp that note and score it properly. Okay, good. That's good that you are aware of your children's abilities so that when you are going back in, to get other notes, you can build on that or refer back to, to that to see what level they're at. And then um, as we refer to it, scaffold their learning. That is also right, a right. good strategy that you, that you already know what to look for. So that way you can intentionally plan to get those notes from your children. Anyone else would like to share? Okay, let's see. Okay, I have I have Pamela Moten here. Good morning. Good morning, Ms. Good morning. Pamela. Can she hear us? Pamela, can you hear us? I unmuted your mic. Okay, let's try again. Just one more Is time. everybody can everybody hear us okay? Yes. Okay, I don't see it. Okay, yes. let's try to... Okay. Oh, I unmuted yep, her. I can hear. Okay. Oh, okay, good morning. You can go ahead. Oh, this is Janicia. You want me to read? Oh. Okay, I'm sorry. No, no, I was trying to uh, do Pamela. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh my God, why is it doing this? Okay. This is Pamela Moten. Pamela, can you hear us? I'm trying to unmute her microphone, but it's not. Someone says some people don't have the option to talk, but they can hear. They came okay. from this Pertina Smith. So how about just put your um, comment in the chat and then I'll read your, um, your messages. I'll read a few messages. Uh, hi, this is uh, okay. Phyllis Castillo from Funtime. What happened to us in the last chat was a lot of mics weren't there. Only a few people had mics. It was a technical difficulty. So most of the people could only type in and nobody could talk. Okay, was, we're just going to type. Yeah, we're going to type. Thank you, Phyllis. Okay, okay I, I actually see um, in the chat um, from Lindsey Gray from Blessed Beginnings, the problem I have with finding time remember to write an adult notes. And she says she teaches four and five-year-olds. Okay. Um, I see Miss Joy Fulton 
She says she keeps a small notebook with her so that she doesn't have an issue with remembering what she needs to write. Okay, so time and remembering. And she teaches two-year-olds. All right, two-year-olds. Okay. Miss Sophia, I'm sorry if I pronounced your last name wrong. I mean, your name wrong. Um, she says she usually uses the activities um, that she's doing to observe. So all of those ways, um, the strategies that you guys mentioned are excellent strategies. Everybody just needs to find what most fits their um, their day to day and what they're most comfortable with. So the purpose is the child outcomes data encompasses all of the mandated domain areas, including language, literacy, math, science, social and emotional approaches to learning, physical development, and creative arts. The information guides us in planning activities focus on progressing children's understanding and mastery of educational goals. So like some of you guys stated, you kind of know what level your children are on. So you plan accordingly so that you can help them reach the next level in note taking. So now we're going to um, discuss the components of anecdotal notes. Um, and before we pr proceed with that one, um, can anybody um, share with us what the components of writing um, an anecdotal note is? What are the, the steps or the requirements for having a complete full anecdotal note? Um, you could type your answers in the chat box. Okay, so nobody can tell me what some of the steps are for the requirements for having a full anecdotal note. Okay, I can start reading some. This is from, I believe this is Lindsay Gray. Um, she said, date, child, first name, what happened, and any direct quotes from the child. All right. Okay, let's go. Let's see a few more. Um, I see when, where, and done from Raquel Smith, from Wanda Nathan area, time of day, activity, kid initials, what you observed or heard. Okay. Phyllis McCaskill said the four wheres. Uh, T.R. Lawler said who, what, when, and where. Amaya Willis, who, what, and when. Okay. Oh, I see Joy Fortin said a full note is brief what you hear and or see. So those are all um, a part of getting the anecdotal notes. Okay, Paris, here we go. So the who, the child or the children involved, the what, what occurred, when, the time of day, where the area it took place. So, so many of you put the four W's and you guys actually spelled out the who, what, when, and where. And um, someone said that you must also include the date in your, um, in the child's name. So when should you begin writing anecdotal notes? So we're going to take maybe about two to three minutes to get some different responses on when do you feel that you should begin writing anecdotal notes.
I see some comments. Yeah. They say um, choice time, group time, circle time. I see someone say that they do four notes per day as soon as a child is in the program, during choice time, downtime, in the morning, whenever you observe something that the child did during the day. Um, I see throughout the day. Mm -hmm. Whenever you observe something that the child did during the day, anytime throughout observing the children, fun time does it as soon as they enter, choice and downtime, anytime during the day. Right. Outside time until they right. leave. Those are all good time. answers. All right. Great participation. Thank you, lady. Miss Phyllis said until they leave. Mm-hmm. Miss George said outside time. Mm -hmm. Kayla Ross Curitan said throughout the day. So right, a lot, and those are all right answers. Um, and somebody actually actually put it in there. They said when the child enters the classroom. Um, so pretty much from the time the child walks in the classroom during the morning time up until they leave for the day. And we all know we've all had that child that may be there a little bit after dismissal time. We can still take notes up until they're leaving. So if they do something, if your dismissal time is 3.30 and they're still there at 3.45 and they did something that you could take a note for, take it because they're there. It, yes, capture as many notes as you can um, and you can filter them out and put them where they need to go. So notes can be taken at any time of the day during the daily schedule. You ready, Pear? Yes. So um, with that, we're going to go into discussing uh, writing anecdotal notes, and it's from what you actually observed and or heard. Um, so with this slide, you will listen to how anecdotal notes are written and how they can be used. And there we're going to ask a few um, of our attendees what do, you, what do you use to collect your anecdotal notes and how do you use them? Oh, sorry about that, ladies. Sasha, there's no sound. You said there's no sound? I'm sorry. Hold on just a second. What about now? No, there's still no sound. Okay, I'm just going to go to the link. Can you ladies hear it now? No. Oh my gosh. Okay, hold on. No. Okay. Okay, I think I got it now. Is that better? 
No, you don't hear anything at no, all. No, we can't hear Sasha. Sorry, technical difficulties. Try it in the slideshow. Okay. Observations of children in your classroom. The National Center on Quality Teaching and Learning uses the house framework to illustrate the effective everyday practices that support school readiness for all children. Ongoing child assessment is an essential feature of a comprehensive framework for quality teaching and learning. What are anecdotal records? You may already be collecting them. An anecdotal record is a written record or note of what a child says or does within the context of classroom activities and routines. The use of anecdotal records is one way to collect information about children's development and learning. These records or notes are one way to document your observations. In addition, collecting anecdotal records is an example of authentic assessment. The assessment information is collected in real-life learning experiences and activities, while playing at the sensory table, building with blocks, having a snack, or exploring the playground. Let's listen to teachers talk about how they collect and use anecdotal records in their own classrooms. Car and they put it away for that was very nice. We do take anecdotal records. Lots of teachers use labels because they're easy to keep in your pockets or keep on a counter. Draw a line. Draw a line. A. A. M. Generally, what I do is I carry around um, a little clipboard and I place these stickers on them for, and each area is listed so I know what I need for that child specifically for this tool. So I'd go around and throughout the month I'm collecting information on the children. And um, so basically the teachable moments or the, the observations that I do, I'm jotting down this information, I'm sticking it on here. So I only have to do it one time. <laughs> so I write it on the sticker and then I'll just come and place it where it belongs in our observation. A Sierra, there you go. Teachers have figured out all sorts of ways to take anecdotal records in their busy classrooms. Teachers use clipboards and notepads, sticky notes, and mailing labels, just to name a few. Regardless, the note needs to include some basic information. The child's name or initials, the date, the time, and the setting. A clear description of the observation and the name of the observer. Always include the child's name or initials and the date. You don't want to end up with a pile of notes, but no idea who they were about. You also don't want to think that just one or two notes will be enough. By collecting anecdotal records on a regular basis, you are creating a record of the child's learning and progress over time. This cycle reminds us that effective teaching and effective ongoing child assessment require that the teacher observe, document observations, interpret their findings, and then use those interpretations or understandings in order to make teaching more purposeful. In this module, we've highlighted the use of anecdotal records or notes as one way to document your observations. But those notes only become valuable when you put them to use. Use the information to plan learning activities and experiences, and then to change those plans as needed to make sure that the child or group of children take full advantage of the learning activities. For more information and tips for collecting and using child assessment by anecdotal records or other methods, see our series on ongoing child assessment. For more information on how to use anecdotal records in your classroom, see the in-service on collecting and using anecdotal records. Welcome. In this short So um, now I'm going to ask if um, a few of you can share in the chat box ways that you um, go about collecting your anecdotal notes. What um, techniques do you use? Sorry. Presentation, I will introduce you to the use of and things like that. So what are some of the things that you use to collect your anecdotal notes? Okay, I see Victoria Hall says sticky note. Okay. I'm just going to read as they come up. I use sticky notes, and I have notes as well in my classroom. I use sticky notes that came from Victoria, Tisha, and Brandy. 
Another sticky note. Taylor Rock Puritan sticky notes. Donna say notepad. Keisha sticky notes. <laughs> Requ- uh, Raquel, uh, sticky notes on notebook. Lene, sticky notes. Lots of sticky notes. Phyllis, notebook. Pamela, notebook. Rueda, I have a small notebook. Janae, sticky notes. Tamira, sticky notes. Amaya, sticky notes. Tierra, sticky notes. Teresa. Okay, so we can, so the consensus is sticky notes and notepads. Anecdotal records as one way to document option. <laughs> okay. Your observations of children and so um in this slide is um two examples that you can use other than sticky notes uh, for collecting your anecdotal notes. Um the one on the left is an example. Um it's called a activity matrix. Um, and you will more so use this with your small group. Um, across the top, it allows you to write your ch- the children in your small group's name. And down the left-hand side, you're able to write down your daily schedule. So if you happen to notice, for example, here, Sophia says um, at arrival time, the teacher wrote she puts her backpack away. Um, that's a good note for um, participating in the daily schedule, as well as um, personal care or personal tasks being done because she put her own book bag away. Um, So that's a good way to collect notes, especially for your small group. Um, On the right hand side, it's called the anecdotal record note card. And this pretty much spells out and gives you everything that you need to have a complete anecdotal note. The child's (laughs) name, the date, the time, the setting or activity, Um, but it also allows you to put in the curricular area or domain that you'll be writing the note for. And that will that's the um, items in the <laughs> And then you will write down exactly what you saw or heard for the child. Um, so these are two pretty good additional ways that you can collect anecdotal notes. So this well, before you move on, Sasha, just uh-huh. something real quick. So she showed, Sasha showed you, go back to the next slide, please. Um, two additional ways, but um, the majority of the center should have the sticky notes. If you don't have sticky notes, then you need to contact your CDS, but does everybody find using the sticky notes as an effective way of note taking? Um, you can put yes or no in the comment box. I know um, when I was when I was a teacher in the classroom, sticky notes and notepads were a very very big thing. Um, but like they said in the video, using mailing labels um, to write down notes for the children and maybe having them have the names listed, and then you can just go and put that mailing label under the core item that it goes to. Um, that yeah, those were pretty much the biggest ways to be able to keep up keep up with your notes. Um, some children, we also use uh, folders. Um, it just had a um, kind of like the matrix that's on the left-hand side of the screen. And then you just wrote them down and make sure that um, when you're scoring a child, especially if you're moving upward from one um, um, core session to another one, you're not backtracking that child. You're not, you can't score them a two in approaches to development and learning um, letter A, and then in the next one, score them a letter one because you're kind of backtracking their development. Okay, so in the comments, I see um, quite a few yeses, but I also see quite a few noes. So those who responded no, I know one person said they like to use a notebook. Can you let us know why you don't feel that the sticky notes is a good option? And Sasha, um, Shamira says she can't hear you. She can't hear me? Okay. Sorry if you ladies can't hear me. Is that better? Ms. Reed said I can't hear you either. Oh, wow. Okay, hold on. 
Come on. Everybody be able to hear me. You have a few people that said they can, and you have a few that say they cannot. Okay, so Miss okay. Smith says sticky notes are too small for her. So do you have something that you're more comfortable with in place of the sticky notes that's more effective for you, Miss Smith? Okay. Some people say they write big, yeah. And they say they keep better track of using um, a notebook. Because sticky notes stop being sticky sometimes and you can keep your notebook on your clipboard with the class clipboard. roster. Okay. Yes. So the sticky notes, like I said, we provide the sticky notes, but if you like to use um, a notebook, something that's more comfortable for you, as long as you're jotting down your notes on a regular. To, so whatever you use, as long as you're getting your notes, that's perfectly fine. Um. Mr. Yeah, and if I can say a stenographer's notebook works well as well. I'm not exactly sure what that is, Mr. Del Rico, but if it works for you, then that's great. <laughs> right. So um let me just say something really quick. Um, this is Deandrea. Uh -huh. So as an agency, it was decided last year that the agency, so it wasn't just CCP, it was also Birth to Five that we um we'll get rid of the anecdotal notebooks and start using the sticky notes. So we know that it's a new adjustment. However, However works best for you all to keep track of your notes and to keep up with your notes, that's what we want you to do. Okay. Okay. Okay, thanks, Sasha. You can move to your next slide. Thank you, ladies. And I'm sorry if you ladies are having trouble hearing me. I hope I fixed the problem. So... Um, this slide is just basically showing what the steps to writing the anecdotal notes are. Again, the four W's, who the note is for, and sometimes there might be more than one child that you need a note for. So if you can get them grouped together and they're doing the same thing, then that's a good thing. Um, then you want to go to what action occurred, when, um, that's referring to what part of the daily schedule did it happen, and where? What area of the classroom did it happen? Was it the house area? Was it the book area? Were you walking down the hall to the restroom? Were you outside on a, a vision walk? Those are the things that you wear. And then this last step is what court item or items does the note fall under? Um, so we're going to get into that one. Are there any questions um, as far as the four W's? If you have them, you can just put them in the chat box and we will get to you. So you definitely want to stay objective when writing anecdotal notes. And this is what this video is going to talk about, staying objective. Early Head Start and Migrant and Seasonal Head Start environments are full of people observing children. Observation happens when you're not even thinking about it. Noticing a baby's eyelids droop, for example, and getting her ready to nap, or helping a mother take in the way her toddler climbs into her lap when the home visitor arrives. Observation is important to the relationships you build and the understanding that you develop of the children and families around you. But formal observation, the kind used to collect data for assessments and monitoring a child's development and progress towards school readiness goals over time, requires a different kind of attention and skill. In everyday interactions, you watch or observe, ask questions about what you see, and adapt to your responses. So, this baby does something, moves or acts, and first you watch, wanting to understand. And then you take in as much information as possible and then make an educated guess. That's your interpretation about what you see. And last, you act or not based on your interpretation. In a formal observation, you take a break from your interactions with the child to observe. So the baby does something, 
and first you watch and then take in as much as possible and then ordinarily you'd make an educated guess about what it all means but in formal observation you record only what you observe objective observation is about noting exactly what you see and hear without interpreting what that behavior means for the baby. Why is it important to be objective in formal observation? Has anyone ever told you that you wore rose-colored glasses? When they said that, they meant you were seeing things with a rosy glow that was clouding your ability to see and interpret. We all see things with different color lenses sometimes. The way you're feeling today, your temperament, even your own personal experiences can tint the way you see and interpret a baby's behavior. Consider this one. If I'm feeling grumpy, and this is a mess that I'll have to clean up later, I might see an infant who's not using all her skills. Or maybe I'm fiercely independent myself. I might see a baby who's getting closer to getting everything in her mouth. Or maybe, in my family, adults carefully spoon feed their children well into toddlerhood. So I might see here a baby who didn't get the kind of care she needed today. All different interpretations of the same baby. If I record these notes, am I describing something about the baby? Or am I really describing my own opinion about the baby? By removing interpretation and focusing on the facts, you create a much more solid picture of the skills this baby is showing you. In objective observation, it's helpful to focus on what you record in your notes. Pay attention to how you describe what you observe, being as concrete as possible. Describe behaviors and vocalizations and write down direct quotes. Describe facial expressions and gestures, but not what you think they mean about how the baby might be feeling. Avoid using adjectives like successful or happy or mad or pretty or hyper. Record what happened first and what happened next without including why you think it happened. This might be challenging at first. We asked a group to watch this new toddler, Matthew, and his family child care provider. Okay, so with that, the three things that she said was to make sure you observe, gather information, and write down exactly what you saw. That is very important. We don't want to make any assumptions when we're writing notes, notes about a child. Uh, for example, if a child is um, crying, we don't want to say that they're hurt or upset. They might need their diaper changed or they want a hug or something. So you never want to make an assumption when you're writing your anecdotal notes. So we're going to do a little practice here. Um, it's two videos. They're very short. Um, so for each video, we're going to take about three to five minutes. And I want you to um, write an anecdotal note. Um, make sure you're observing, watching the videos. Write a sh short but brief, brief but specific anecdotal note for each video. And then we're going to have a few people share um, what they came up with. Where'd you write him? 
Where's your Where's your Huh? Where's your 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 and see what kind of notes you came up with from observing this uh, video. You can um, write them in the chat and then we will be reading them. Now remember, we're writing. We're writing as we, as if we were writing an actual anecdotal note. So who, what, when, where? Okay. 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 We're trying to write these as complete anecdotal notes. You can assume the baby's name, um, since his name was not given. We just call him Chad. No, somebody called him BJ. <laughs> okay. I'm also seeing in the responses that they included the date. Mm -hmm. During church time, when John laid on the floor, he played with the rattle until he dropped the rattle on 6 18 2020. Okay. Miss Moulton, Pamela Moulton. 9 a.m. Jim okay. transfers rattle from hand to hand on the rug in the play area. Okay. Baby was playing with a toy, laying down. He was playing with a rattle. He would, it, this was during choice time. This was on 6, 18, 2020. Okay. On June 18, 2020, during work time, Matthew played with rattle on the floor while kicking his legs and moving both arms. Very observant. Very oh, Amaya said she wasn't done with her note. Uh-oh. Miss Jordan, during time of time, baby came out the blue and green rattle, then dropped it. Okay, so good. Yes. So remember, we all always want to have the, the date, the time, the child's name, what happened, and where it occurred. Okay, ladies, thank you. And so for the next video, we're going to um, do the same thing. I'm going to play the video, and then you're going to write a brief, complete anecdotal note. Here's baby Adia. Hey. <laughs> 
Okay, some notes that were um, shared during CT, Anna was, is laying on her back and rolls over on her left side, mouths her fingers and says, I, I, I. Another 2 2 2020, tummy time. Time, Bailey rolled back and forth on her side. 6 18 20. During tummy time, Adia was laying on laying on her back and was playing with her fingers. She then looked away into the distance, then said, Ma. Mm -hmm. Okay. Asia was on the rug on 6 18 2020, rolling on her left side and putting her hands in her mouth. During playtime on the rug in the soft bay area, baby Anna rolled back and forth while playing with her fingers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so you guys pretty much have different observations, provide enough information in that observation, including the time, the date, the um area, so all the W's. So now, we have a few more. During choice time in the block area, Baby was laying on her back playing with her feet. Baby Adia is a, is a three of age. The date was June 18, 2020. Baby was laying on her back and putting both hands in her mouth. So also remember, you have to include yourself as the observer um, when doing a note. So you can say, for example, if I was watching the baby, and I'll just take um, the last one, I see Miss Brittany's note. I can say um, on June 18, 2020, at 10.52, Miss Sasha observed um, Maria trying to roll over during tummy time or, you know, something like that. You want to make sure that you include the observer, which will be yourself when you're writing the note. Okay, so great, ladies. And gentlemen, so in this next clip, we're going to watch a young toddler, um, and then we're going to write a note for him. Sorry about that. Bye bye, Mom. Bye. Hey, Nick. 
It's okay. Try again. Try again. Try in there. Yeah, try again. Try again. Try a different spot then. What about here? No, what about here? Oh. No. Yeah, try again. Try again. Try again. Try here. That's it. Try again. Try it. There you go. A few minutes to write a note. I'm going to actually give him the child's name. His name is Levi. And he was completing a puzzle. But if you notice something else um, that you can include in a note, you can write that as well. Okay, Sasha, we have um, a few people sitting there unable to hear anything, you or the videos. Really? Okay. So no one was able to hear that video? If you could hear the video, put yes in the chat box. If you couldn't, please put no. So we, so we need to know if we need to replay the video. Yeah. So far, we have like a few that was not able to hear the video. Okay, so let me add this because um, I know some people are watching from computers, some are using tablets, and some people are calling in from their phones. Um, what method are you using if you were not able to hear me? Okay, you have phone users, computer users. Someone said that you're you're low. They can hear, but you're low. Someone's using their laptop. And then someone said they heard Sasha, but the video they couldn't hear the video, and they're on their iPad. Okay. Sorry for the technical difficulties, lady. Of course. When you practice, it's just fine. But when you go live, you get problems. So do I need to play the video again? What do you think, Paris? Play it again. So let's do this. Let's do this. We'll play it again. However, um, this, is this is being recorded, so we're going to have to move on. Okay. So... Um, I can send a link after this is over um, so they, they can rewatch it again at their own time. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay.
No, try a different spot then. What about here? No, what about here? Try again. 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 Try
Oh, okay, we got, okay. We got some more answers coming in. Oh. And I'm going to end the poll now. Okay. So we have 60% um, of you that said you are very comfortable. 30% um, said they're somewhat comfortable. 4% uh, said they're not comfortable. And we actually have 6% that said they're new to this. Um, and so hopefully this information in this presentation will help you um, get to understand better um, the the act of actually writing the anecdotal notes and scoring. Um, and if you have any additional questions, um, you can leave them in the chat box or you can reach out to your child developmental specialist for that. Okay, Sasha, before we move on, I just want to do um, just a survey on the poll. So those okay. that um, are somewhat comfortable. So if you selected somewhat comfortable you're comfortable with writing a note and you're what's you're not being comfortable with scoring is it that you don't know how to identify the appropriate category can you guys um state some of the things that make you uncomfortable with scoring it that's a good question Perry. thank you And while they're, um, the somewhat's are going to respond, those who, the 6% that are new to this, can you um, make sure that you get with your child development specialist and make them aware that you're new to it so that um, everyone will receive this, um, the PowerPoints and all, but if you may need to have one-on-one -on -one, um, time to get more acclimated to um, anecdotal notes, then you can do that, arrange that with your CDS. I see Ms. Joy Fulton said her issue is choosing um, the category to score. Um, Ms. Portia says, I want to make sure the scores are accurate. She can cre create a note, but it's, again, selecting the uh, appropriate category. So a lot of it is okay with writing. Um, it's just the scoring that is, um, that gets it done. Another question, does everyone have access to the scoring guide? Because in the scoring guide, it does list, list examples, but be aware that your note doesn't have to I, be identical to what the example is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to get into um, the scoring part. Um, is anybody able to um, name the eight content areas um, from the core, um, those main categories? There are eight of them. Um, you can put your responses in the chat box. It's, or name as many as you can. There are eight of them. So I don't know if everyone was able to hear Sasha, but can um, anyone identify any of the uh, eight content areas that we, um, okay, I see Tier approaches to learning. Mm -hmm. Social emotional development, physical development, initiative. That's a subcategory, uh -huh. For Ms. Sheila, we don't have a scoring guy. Okay, Ms. Um, Sheila, um, speak with your child developmental specialist or your um, maybe your supervisor. There might be a, a book at your center. Language, liter language literacy, technology, physical development and health, 
cognitive development skills, mathematics, social studies, science. Good, good, good. Okay. Reflection. Okay. This really, really quick. I don't mean to cut you off. I'm sorry. And if I am, I'm, I, I apologize. Um, if you do not have scoring guides at your center, if you have not seen them, I'm going to put my email address in the chat box and we'll get you one. We'll get one to you. Thank you, V. You're welcome. So the eight content areas are approaches to learning, social and emotional development, physical development and health, language, literacy, and communication, mathematics, creative arts, science and technology, social studies, and a nice area would be the English language learning, um, which can also be used uh, with children that have um, English as a second language in their home. Under those eight content areas, you have subcategories, and they're lettered A through double J. Typically, you would only use letters A through double H. But again, if you have those children that are in your classrooms um, who have English as a second language, you would go all the way through from A to the double J. Um, just uh, type a yes in the chat box if you've seen this chart or something similar to it before. This is just kind of um, a summary of what's inside of the core advantage scoring guide. So here's um, just a, a, a up close of a page out of the scoring guide. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it's from the approach to learning and the subcategory is for the initiative and planning. And what the scoring guide does is that um, it breaks down the scoring into um, seven, I'm sorry, eight levels. It goes from the lowest of zero all the way up to seven, which is the highest score. Um, and this helps observers to um, have reliable and valid notes for each area. And they go along with the anecdotal notes. So if you have the scoring guide and you look in there, you can refer to the notes that are in there. They're just examples. So if you see something similar, these levels will help you identify which level to score your note. Typically, since we're an early head start, the levels will go from zero to three. Not saying that some of the children in your classroom might not may display a level higher, like a level four. So again, this is the page, this is page four from the course scoring guide. And it's just a snippet to show an example of the scoring Example of the, the anecdotal note and then how it would be scored depending on what the note is. So here we're going to um, practice taking anecdotal notes, or I'm sorry, scoring the anecdotal note. So we have the note here for you already. So you're going to read the note, and then um, if you can refer, refer to your scoring guide, um, and then you can decide which core item um, or items, because it could be more than one, does the note belong to and what would you score? So let's take about three minutes for this one. So some some comments in the chat. What would you score this note? Under what item would you put it and what would you score it? Okay, you have some um, responses. 
Some say they will score it as a two under Q. Under Q. Try to go scroll back and see what Q is. Someone said language, literacy, and communication. And we'll give it a three. Mm -hmm. Some people are saying twos. Some say they will put it under L2. So what is Q and L? Q is, letter Q is book enjoyment and knowledge. Okay. You said some under L? Yes, for speaking. Okay. Some says L2, language and literacy two. Okay. So it can be scored under <clears throat> social emotional, letter E for building relationship with adults. And it will be a level two. Child seeks out familiar adult to communicate a simple need or desire using at least one word. The child intentionally locates a trusted adult for assistance, comfort, or companionship. The word may be in reference to the adult and or the need or desire. So those other options were good, but um, I was more focused on the building of relationships, but the um, letter Q for book enjoyment, that does gonna go under that as well. So like I said before, one note can go under more than one core item. And this is an example of that. So when you're actually doing that observation with that particular example, like you guys are saying it could go under language and literacy, book enjoyment, also building relationships. That's how you can cross-reference your notes. Mm -hmm. So that one particular note can fit in all of those areas and it actually can be used in all of those areas that they fit. Okay, so we have one more note here. On June 18th, during music and movement on the carpet, Sasha was asked what song she would like to sing, and Sasha said, Monkey. So let's take a few minutes and decide which core item that will go under and what it will be scored. Okay, you see anything there? I can't see my chat box. It's um some people are saying M2. M2. Okay. So for um was that it? That's the only one you see there? Oh, okay, I see it. M2, Cognitive, Five Little Monkeys, maybe. Social and Emotional Development, Creative Arts, E2, Y2, L2. Can you put that in three places? Good question. So, with this, yes, this is a note that can be placed in more and under more than one core item. Um, ATL approaches to learning. Level two, um, child indicates an intention with uh, one or two words. The child expresses a simple intention with a word or two, such as naming an object, ball, or desire, climb up. The child may state its intention or choose between options. For example, play with the block or squeeze toy. This can happen at any time during the day and not just at uh, planning time. Um, also, um, like uh, Paris referred to in the other note, if you want to cross-reference, you can also put it under language, literacy, and communication. That is letter M, and it will be scored as a number two. Um, child responds verbally to a simple statement or question. And it can also go under social emotional development, letter G, which is community, that the child participates in the part of the daily routine when led or assisted by an adult.
Okay, so we have a question. We have a hand raised. Okay. Let's see from Miss Pamela Moulton. Mm -hmm. Miss Moulton, can you hear us? You want to ask your question? I can't unmute her. So Pamela, can you type your um your question in the chat, and we'll answer it that way. Okay. okay. Oh, she said she doesn't have a question. Oh, okay. 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 Um, so, again, this is another example of a note that can go under more than one um, court item. So, ladies, we've reached the end. Um, so um, hopefully this presentation has helped you provide the key components to writing anecdotal notes, um, address the importance of anecdotal note taking and its benefits. Um, if you have any questions, you can feel free to reach out to your center, your center CPS specialist um, with any other questions, um, or you can leave a comment in the chat box and we can get to you as soon as possible. Uh, okay, so I know we're at the end. I know we're at the end, but I did want to address something really quick because there were a, cute, a couple of questions in the chat regarding like, why do we take anecdotal notes? Okay. So we take anecdotal notes to track the child development. And we know that child development changes rapidly. That's why we take anecdotal notes three times per program year. Mm -hmm. We use those notes to plan for our activities, to make, to make sure that we can get those children to that next level developmentally. Also, with the notes that you take, that can determine if a child needs a, um, a teacher concern or not. So we use, all, we use notes in different ways. All um, Head Start programs use anecdotal notes, so that's how we use them. You also use them when you do uh, parent teacher conferences and home visits, so you share them with the parents as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so thank you. And I believe I got everybody that was in the chat for um, the attendance, so thank you. Um, your certificates will be going out within 24 to 48 hours. Uh, it's taking a little bit longer because we've had such great participation. I see we have 93 people today, which is amazing. So it might take a little longer than 48 hours, but you'll definitely get them. <laughs> you'll definitely get them by Monday. While we, um, um, I just wanted to say if there were any questions that may have not got answered or if some questions may have came up during the course, if you guys wanted to put them in the chat box to see if they can be answered since we um, did kind of um, sum everything up before the 12 o'clock hour. Again, I thank you everybody that came and joined us for our um, first virtual cohort. We had a couple of technical difficulties, but we worked through them. I apologize if you were not able to hear me or all of the videos, but again, Ms. Viandra will be sending out a link um, so you can view um, the training at your leisure. Um, hope you all got something from it, and uh, thank you again for joining us. Have a nice day. Bye.